All right, number one is play the C chord in the main riff. So you know the main riff, it goes like this. Okay, those are C chords in there. Uh, now when you first learn it, you'll probably learn it with a C add nine, which is this chord. So you'll learn. Now that's great because uh, you'll get your timing down. But once you have your timing down, play it with the full C chord. Even though this sounds similar to this, when you play them in the riffs, they sound significantly different. So that's number one, play the full C chord. All right, number two is palm muting, okay? In the main riff, there are 12 chords and seven palm mutes by my count. Uh, a mute is really a chord with no notes in it. <laughs> so it's as important as any other chord. So where are the palm mutes? Um, you play C, palm mute, then C, C, G, palm mute, then uh, C, palm mute, then G, D, palm mute. And then you play G, G, D, palm mute, G, palm mute, D. Oops, D, palm mute. Those are your palm mutes. So um, practice that, get your palm mutes in there. Where I hear people not playing their palm mutes is especially on this back half where it's a G, G, D, where it's this part where it's They're not playing them there. And if you don't play them there, it's real mushy. It turns into this. And we don't want that. That just is a mush pile. So do your palm mutes. All right, number three is timing. Now, you can say that of any song, um, but there's a couple places in this song where there's some subtle timing things. Um, the first thing to do for timing is just to play with the live recorded track. Play along with it, get your general timing down. But like I said, there's a few places in the main riff where I want to call out some specific timing. Now, the first one is between the, is in the CCG, so of the opening riff. So you play G, and then you play. And the uh, second C in this, so it's CCG, like that. The uh, second C comes a little late, and the G comes a little early. So if I exaggerate that, it's. Okay, so play that with a little bit. The one is a little late and the one is a little early. Um, the next place is, so it's, so it's C, 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 G, C, and then it's a G, C again. And this G, C is the same way. The G is, or the G is a little late and the or G, D, and then the D is a little early. So, so if I exaggerate, um, I don't know how I can exaggerate that, but so I guess I can try to exaggerate it. So it's okay. It's like that. In the back half of the riff, the G G D has the same pattern. The second G is a little late, and the D is a little early. So it's okay. So in the main riff, those are your. Uh, things that you want to watch for in the timing uh, above and beyond just listening to the track and getting your timing down. In the chorus, there's a similar thing with these little accent notes. So when you play the chorus, the, um, these little, those little notes, the first time you play them off of this, um, off of this C here or D, actually A, B, off the C here. There's a little bit of delay. You want to accent a little. Actually, I'll turn down my volume, so. So I don't know if that, let me turn down my volume a little more. So the first one has a delay, so. The 
there's a little delay. And there's no delay on the second one. So that's how you want to play that as And I kind of messed up that. All right, the fourth one is play the pinch harmonic in the solo. It occurs about a third of the way into the solo. It's that. Um, so the only advice I can give you on that is um, consider how you're holding the pick. Consider the, the pick material you're using, the shape you're using. Uh, practice it. I'm no pinch harmonic uh, expert myself. And your amp settings also affect it. A higher gain, it makes it easier to do pinch harmonics. All right, so that's pinch harmonic. All right, so number five is bend to pitch. Now you can say that about any piece of music. If you're not bending to pitch, um, you're not playing it as well as you could be. But in the case of You Shook Me All Night Long, the, uh, in, during the solo, there's some bends that really need to be hit. If you miss them high and overbend, your guitar is gonna sound out of tune. And if you underbend them, it's gonna just take all the energy out of the solo. In general, it's better to underbend, in my opinion, than to overbend. But um, the best way for me to show you this is to just play the part in the solo. It's sort of down at the bottom. And that's kind of a mishmash of it, but that's where all those bends are taking place. Now, the best way to deal with that is to, or to learn this, is to play, either to practice by playing to, to, to pitch. So if I'm gonna bend this B, B up to a full step, one thing I can do is move up a full step and hit it, and then by ear try to bend to that, and find out where I think that sounds like close to where it is. The other way is to take a tuner and um, just look on the tuner and see where it's telling you it's supposed to be. So here it's telling me that this is an F and there it's a G. So um, one thing is you can visually see where it is and here, that's a G. Okay, so that's all I can say about that is practice bending to pitch, um, work on it, make it part of your practice routine. It'll really pay off in your solos where you're ripping around really fast and you, and you just have to hit those notes and bend them right to pitch and if you do that, your solos will have a lot more energy. All right, those are my five uh, tips for improving the way you play You Shook Me All Night Long. I hope you enjoy them and I'll see you next time. That's the pinch harmonic, obviously. I'm not a pinch harmonic expert.